Hello, I'm Julianne with Healthy Living with Julianne. Welcome to my health series, Steps to Boost Your Immune System. Today we're going to talk about uh, alkaline water and just trying to get my presentation up here. Um, the benefits of hydration with alkaline water to boost your immune system. Mm -hmm. There we go. So today I want to give you some, some information about how water can empower you to uh, feel better, improve your energy and mental focus. As it helped me beat uh, debilitating autoimmune hormone, thyroid, candida, sinus issues, uh, also mercury amalgam fillings. I had a lot going on, my health crashed, along with debilitating back issues from car accidents. My health crashed. I was a mess uh, physically, mentally, and emotionally. <clears throat> but alkaline water was a big contributing factor to me becoming healthy and fit. Uh, so much so that I could fulfill a lifelong dream of trekking in Nepal. You see me there in my red hat with the gorgeous Nepalese mountains behind me. So my agenda today is to discuss how hydration promotes health and Im your immune system. What are dehydration's many disguises? Which water is healthiest? <clears throat> Tap, bottled, filtered, or alkaline water? What is alkalinity, which may be a new word for you, and what are the health benefits of drinking alkaline water, particularly during this health crisis? Why do athletes drink alkaline water? And what do Japanese doctors and hospitals recommend? Not what, why do Japanese doctors and hospitals recommend alkaline water to their patients? So hydration really does promote health and strengthens your immune system. If you're not already drinking a lot of water, consider a new habit. You may well feel better, improve your memory, improve sleep, improve energy, improve lung function, so you are more resilient and less vulnerable to the virus. No guarantees, but chances are you'll feel better. So water is the single most important nutrient for our bodies. It's involved in every function in our bodies. It's a major ingredient in our blood, urine, and saliva. It helps carry nutrients and oxygen to our cells. Our bodies are made up of over 70, 000, uh, 70 trillion cells and it carries waste from our cells. This is called detoxification or cleansing of toxic buildup. When you don't drink enough water, you can become dehydrated, which can lead which leads to inflammation and weakens your immune system. Consider uh, how much water is in your body. The, the organs on the right of this slide show the percentage for each organ. So the brain is made up of over 85% water. The bones, 22% water. Kidneys, 82%. Muscles, 75%. Blood, 90% water. So you can start to see that if you have health challenges to do with your brain, your kidneys, your blood, that may, that uh, dehydration may be a big contributor to these health challenges. So how does dehydration occur? Dehydration is the amount of water leaving the body is greater than the amount being consumed. And it is triggered by water, water loss is triggered by three things. Eliminating, urinating and defecating, sweating and breathing. Cornell Medical Center conducted a hydration study in which it concluded that approximately 75% of Americans have symptoms of chronic dehydration. 30% of Americans experience a weak thirst mechanism, and they often mistake thirst for hunger. 
So they eat food when they are thirsty. Mild dehydration can slow your metabolism as much as 3%. Dehydration contributes to fatigue, irritability, brain fog, and memory issues. Here is a long list of dehydration's many disguises. Acid reflux, ADD, allergies, Alzheimer's, asthma, autism, brain fog, candida, chronic pain, colitis, constipation, dementia, depression, diabetes, dyslexia, fatigue, food cravings, fuzzy thinking, headaches, heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, joint stiffness, kidney stones, low energy, Lyme disease, menopause, migraines, obesity, Parkinson's, sleep issues, sinusitis, skin disorders. At birth, we're approximately 95% water by weight. So my observation is that rates of autism, ADD, dyslexia, particularly in kids, is rising. It may be because kids are drinking less and less water and more soda, more, more drinks that are, you know, they're just drinking less water. Um, as we age, we become approximately 50% water by weight, so we need to replenish more, not less. Alzheimer's, dementia, brain fog, all of these um, are affected by dehydration. This book, You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty, is a wonderful book written by Dr. Batman Gelich, who is an Iranian PhD, uh, Iranian MD, who was imprisoned in 1973 in Iran as a political prisoner. And a fellow inmate uh, came to him and asked him for meds, medications. And he said, I'm a prisoner like you, I don't have any. Why don't you just try drinking more water? And the inmate did. By the, within 24 hours, the next day, the inmate's pain had subsided, and um, that started Dr. Batman Gelich on a quest to understand better the relationship between water and health. And he eventually emigrated to Falls Church, Virginia. So I recommend you check out his website. He, along with many experts, recommend that we drink half your body, that you drink half your body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 160 pounds, divide it by two, that's 80 ounces a day. Dehydration contributes to weight gain, so if you find your metabolism is slowing down, you may want to drink more water. A decrease in water intake increases your fat deposits while an increase in water intake reduces fat deposits. If you're dehydrated, the kidneys cannot function properly and dump the toxic load into the liver, uh, and the liver cannot metabolize the stored fat into usable energy. Again, dehydration leads to inflammation, which leads to weak immune system. So before breakfast, try drinking one glass of water I believe that coffee dehydrates your body and you wake up from sleeping five, six, seven hours, you haven't been drinking water and so you're dehydrated. So try drinking one glass of water and see how you feel. You might find that you need less coffee to get going and you have more energy. Before lunch, drink two to three glasses of water. Before dinner, drink two glasses of water. I I'm not a proponent of drinking water with meals because I believe it interferes with the digestive enzymatic activity. So I recommend drinking in between meals. So which water is healthiest to drink? Well, I believe there's good, better, and best water. Certainly if you only have access to tap water and you can only afford tap water, you should drink it. You want liquids moving through your body. But many times tap water is chemically treated, so it loses its natural ability to fight aging, inflammation, and oxidation. The hazards of plastic bottles is that they, in, they are made with phthalates, plastic, linked to respiratory birth defects, decreased sperm, and behavioral issues. They also leach BPA. 
and this mimics the sex hormone estrogen. So if you're having hormonal issues, as I did for many years, try to reduce the amount of plastic, not only the drinking water from plastic bottles, but the amount of plastic in your kitchen, your, you know, that which your Tupperware, instead of using plastic Tupperware, use glass. I realize it's not convenient. I'm just the messenger. <laughs> um, but uh, the less plastic, the better, if you want to balance your hormones. So what is alkalinity? That may be a new word for you. And what is pH? On the right of the screen, you see a pH scale. It extends from 3.0 to 7.0. That is, and then to 11.0. So everything below 7.0 neutral is acidic. Everything above uh, the 7.0 is alkaline. This is a universally accepted scale. Health govern is your health is governed by the pH levels of your blood, urine, and saliva, which you can measure. You, you can measure with um, strips. Uh, online, I've only found these strips, uh, I think at Whole Foods. I haven't found them in the stores, but I found them online where you can put it under your tongue or you can urinate on the strip and it will show you it's it's not exact but it's a it's a it's you know i wouldn't spend a lot of time on it because most of us are too acidic that's just it because we're exposed to a lot of toxins when you're testing water or a beverage you can use ph drops um, and i'm going to try and pull up a video uh, to show you a ph demonstration if i can do that <laughs> Alkalinity is a buffering uh, capacity or mechanism to neutralize acids and toxins. We are in the midst of a health crisis. We've got toxins swirling around us all the time. Other toxins that we're exposed to, car fumes, airplane fumes, chemical trails full of mercury and lead, um, pesticides in food, unclean water, mercury amalgam fillings in our teeth, which was a contributor to my health crashing. Um, uh, electromagnetic frequencies from cell phones. So uh, when you put the cell phone against your ear, I do a whole discussion on this on my Facebook page. The EMFs travel through the ear canal to the brain and that affects your body and it starts uh, uh, weakening your immune system and acidifying you. So we're just exposed to a whole lot of um, toxins. Alkalinity, however, reduces the oxidative stress and inflammation. So how does it improve your health and boost immunity? First of all, many people say that it's um, artificial, um, but that's not true. When I hiked in Nepal a couple years ago, um, uh, the water at altitude is alkaline. Many mountainous indigenous peoples are healthier than those of us who live um, in urban environments. Um, just gonna have to plug in my laptop here, excuse me. Okay, we're back. Um, so uh, the water at altitude is naturally alkaline. The thing, the most important thing that I hope you take away from this discussion is that inflammation, bacteria, fungus, and viruses cannot grow in an alkaline environment. So when your body is more alkaline from the inside out, you are less vulnerable. You're more resilient. No guarantees, more um, resilient, less vulnerable. So the alkalinity reduces the oxidative stress and inflammation because it's negatively charged. It can enhance your energy, sleep, digestion, hormones, thyroid, candida. Alyssa Sobecki is the owner of The Difference Baker, which is a wonderful gluten-free bakery in Ashburn, Virginia. She says, I have been solely drinking alkaline water at home for the last 10 years. It has helped me and my family in so many ways. It has guided our digestion, sleep, energy levels, and most importantly, boosted our immune systems. 
We use it to water our plants, cook, and it is the only water our pets drink because animals uh, are made up of cells just like humans. So when they drink alkaline water, it's more readily absorbed than tap water or filtered water. She says, we are all healthier as a result of drinking alkaline water. When I decided to build the Difference Baker, I knew it was the only water I wanted to cook with and sell to my customers. I recommend you check out this wonderful bakery. So how did alkaline water improve my health? So I mentioned I recovered from autoimmune hormone, my health, my health crashed big time. Candida sinus fatigue, debilitating back pain. I felt um, within two weeks of drinking alkaline water, I was urinating less. I'd been drinking the same, I drank the same amount of alkaline water as I had been drinking plastic bottled water. I was urinating less because my body, the cells in my body were absorbing it more readily. My energy went up, my sleep, um, <clears throat> I could feel the yeast in my body, which I've been trying to get rid of for years, start to go away. It, it, my candida just improved, just many, many health issues. My mom is 88 years old. Isn't she adorable? <laughs> She's had an alkaline water unit in her home for the past five years, and uh, she is doing great during this health crisis. Her immune system is strong. Her lungs are strong. She's mentally sharp. She remembers everything I say. She comes back a week later. How's that going? You told me about this. She's emotionally as stable and happy as an 88 year old can be during this health crisis. She gets out and walks in her community in Blacksburg, Virginia, um, when it's, when the weather permits. Uh, you can see this was last year doing very well. She's, um, I'm just so relieved that she's been drinking alkaline water um, and uh, doing well. So you can see the scale on the right here, what you drink matters, and you can see the um, pH level of the different uh, beverages. Orange juice is 3.5, tomato juice 4.0, coffee and tea 5.0. All of these, including the um, bottled waters, are all acidic, acidifying, um, which means it lowers your immune system. Uh, the alkaline water at 8.0 or higher is um, uh, strengthens your immune system and it's antibacterial. So why do doctors recommend alkaline water? Dr. Susan Clark, the author of The Chemistry of Success, says performance and optimal health depend on the body's ability to maintain a slightly alkaline state in virtually all of our cells and tissues. Drinking alkaline water will help to neutralize over acidity and over time will help to restore your buffering ability. Like vitamin C, E, and beta carotene, alkaline water acts as an antioxidant because of its excess supply of free electrons. So why do Japanese doctors acknowledge the power of ionized alkaline water? because they understand that bacteria, fungus, viruses, and toxicity cannot grow in an alkaline environment. So when you are alkaline <clears throat> from the inside out, you're more uh, resilient and less vulnerable. So the hospitals in Japan actually have alkaline water ionizers uh, there, um, and they're viewed as medical devices. They give the alkaline water to patients <clears throat> because they find it helps them recover uh, faster and leave the hospital faster. So hydration does lead to a stronger immune system. Now you may have seen bottled alkaline water in the grocery stores. Um, these are two brands and unfortunately, they, they, on the, on the labels, it says 8.5, 9.0, 9.5. .9 I have taken alkaline water drops. I wish I had them, my pH drops with me. And I have tested this water. They are actually alkaline. But the challenge is that when alkaline water leaves an ionizer unit, it is subjected to light and oxygen. So the pH level only lasts for about three days, 36 hours. And then it starts to decrease and it's no longer alkaline.
it becomes acidic. So when this water has been in the bottle for a week or two or three or a month or two or more, and it's still alkaline, that means that it has probably been treated with chemicals to maintain the pH. So you're getting alkaline water, but you're also getting chemicals. So I advise against it. Major League Baseball teams uh, are finding that alkaline water is helping improve athletic uh, performance and recovery. Uh, every single Major League Baseball team, except one, I think, has a Valora Living Water ionizer in the locker room. Washington Nationals, our own Washington Nationals here in Washington, D.C., along with uh, St. Louis Cardinals, Detroit Tigers, Cincinnati Reds, Miami Marlins, Pittsburgh Pirates, Colorado Rockies, Kansas City Royals. So how does it work, this ionizer? And I did a lot of research before um, I uh, tried this unit. I was uh, actually going to a, a, a an alternative clinic that had the unit and allowed me to do a trial, a uh, two-week trial where I could um, take the water home. Um, it splits the water, so it's restructuring and splitting. It's restructuring the molecules so they become smaller and they can penetrate the cells in your body more effectively. So that's why when I was drinking it, um, um, I urinated less after two weeks because my body was absorbing the water. It's fantastic. So the negative charge produces the alkaline water when it splits. The positive charge produces acidic water, which is interesting because it's an antiseptic, antiviral, antibacterial. So uh, the acidic water is not, not designed to in, for internal use, but it can be used on your skin, hands, kitchen countertops, bathtubs. So during this health crisis, I put the acidic water in a spray bottle Put it, I spray my car and I take it with me in places where, you know, I may need to spray for spray. Much healthier than the hand wipes. The hand wipes have an odor. Whenever you have an odor or a fragrance, that is uh, a toxin that's been added to make it smell nice. Um, but um, you want to, you know, this is healthier than the hand wipes. Let's put it like that. So my mom loves using her ionizer unit in her kitchen. You can see it's there on the counter. She's got her left hand on the faucet and um, uh, she is filling up. And she's been, she's been using this for over five years. And uh, such a relief for me, because I've only been able to see her once. Her community is um, a little bit strict as most are and um so uh she's had a great experience and uh 88 years old and still going so in terms of installation options on the right you'll see the simple faucet which is what my mom has and i have the unit con con connects to a faucet however about 50 percent of the people that we work with um in the wellness arena have sprayer faucets, so you cannot connect it to the sprayer faucet. So you can see there's another adapter attachment there which can be inserted into the soap dish in the sink or in the granite, a plumber is involved. This unit is mobile, so you can take it, you know, if you move, it's about eight and a half by 11, very manageable. It can also sit underneath the sink or it can be put on, on the wall. Um, very mobile. So when I was making a decision about this ionizer unit, I had declared bankruptcy um, prior, um, twice, actually, well, once, uh, twice over years um, because I was, I was very sick for many, many years, and I took a holistic approach. So 99.9% .9 of everything I did was not covered by insurance. And uh, it was a decision that I made um, uh, to take a natural approach, herbs, homeopathics, um, supplements, um, and uh, very, very costly, however. Um, I did get better. And uh, uh, so what I did was I analyzed my spending habits and uh, you know, I looked at what I was spending on um, water weekly, monthly, and yearly. So as a single person, I spent about $150 a month buying water at the store, bringing it home. 
Uh, and then I multiplied that by 12 months and realized I was spending about $1,800 a year buying water. And then I multiplied that by five years and realized I was spending about 9,000 uh, over five years. So this unit, Velara Living Water Ionizer, cost $2,499 plus tax plus shipping. It provides a five-year warranty and there is financing available. It connects to the faucet in your kitchen, bathroom, or laundry room and has been a life changer for me, my mom, and many of my health coaching clients. So I offer a 14-day free trial for people. I realize it's a big expense, um, but it is a lifelong purchase. Um, I've had my unit for about seven or eight, year, eight years, maybe. Um, and just thrilled that I, that I got it. And anyway, so I have a demo unit that I loan out to people for 14 days to install in your kitchen, laundry room, or bathroom. i work with you on that. Um, and then you can try it. The whole family can try it. No obligation. Um, or option two, you can actually collect alkaline water from my home, from my unit. You need to come to my home every three days. If, you just, if you're too busy and you can only come once a week, it's not going to work because you, as I said, the pH drops every three days. So you really need to make a conscious decision to do this trial every single day. And then I work with you to make sure that um, you're getting any questions answered. Um, and, uh, you know, there's no obligation, but I, I find that that's the best way for you actually, for you and your family to try it. So you can contact me there if you're interested, you have any questions. And then in summary, today we talked about how water is a very important nutrient. Dehydration weakens your immunity and causes aging. Remember that long list, dehydration's many disguises? Dehydration is a component in every illness. Not the only thing but it's certainly a contributor. Hydration, however, reduces your inflammation, which is at the core of all illness, boosts your energy, your immune system, your, your sleep, your digestion, your hormones, your thyroid, and your lung capacity, which is very important right now. There's good, better, and best water. Um, get better, get busy drinking some water and uh, try to drink half your body weight in ounces of alkaline water daily, daily. So one glass before breakfast and coffee, two to three glasses before lunch, two glasses before dinner. And um, I would start this if, you, if you're ramping up your water, start it on a Friday. <laughs> so that if you're urinating more, you're doing it over the weekend and not during the, the day, during your job. Um, but eventually your body will start to thank you <laughs> because you'll start to feel better and uh, it's going to flush. No matter what kind of water you drink, it's going to start to flush the toxins out. Um, and uh, if you can and you want to try alkaline water, it's more efficiently absorbed and it's um, anti-oxidizing, meaning it has an, it's an antioxidant, so combating free radicals that cause a lot of illness. So I would like to see if I can share uh, um, I would like to share another oh, here we go. This is what I would like to share here. This is what I would like to share. Let's see if this works. Hi, I'm Carl Thompson, and we're going to conduct a really quick water demonstration to identify the alkalinity you see in these popular beverages that we drink every day to feed our family. And so what I have in my hand here, this is a pH scale. Uh, it outlines the pH scale. It actually goes from 0 to 14. You can hear it represented here is 3 to 11 on the pH scale. 7.0 is neutral, and uh, that's about where our body, our body's blood wants to be at about 7.3, 7.4. 7.0 is neutral. Anything higher than that is recognized as alkaline. Contributes to uses a greater uh, degree of oxygen in the substance. Anything to the left of this is actually acidic, meaning a greater degree of hydrogen in the substance. 
So let's hear some of these popular bands that get to see where they fell in the uh, acid alkaline chart. Remember, get the substance and alkaline that's contributing to our health and contributing to our alkalinity, contributing to our energy. It has a greater degree of oxygen. And if it's on the acid side, uh, that's contributing to acidosis, it's contributing to oxidation, uh, and it's contributing to a greater degree of hydrogen, which is, which is not what we want. It saps our energy. So let's see where these popular beverages fall on the pH scale. Right here, I have a popular water, one of the most popular waters in the world. In fact, I'm going to go and I'm going to pour a couple of these. Okay, we're going to test their alkalinity. These are popular waters that you get at the grocery store that uh, we commonly uh, refer to and think of as being good, healthy for us, things that are probably healthier than, than other alternatives. Uh, this is a sports drink, uh, represents all sports drinks, uh, the popular stuff that the athletes advertise that our kids want. And this represents all sodas, uh, you know, those carbonated beverages that a lot of people like to have. So this is an array of popular beverages. And what I have here, this is just tap water, little tap water from our sink. You might scrub your sink, but just, you know, tap water is really good for you. Some people, it doesn't taste good for your ass. And then what I have here, this is living water, made by this living water of mine. And it represents uh, kind of the good deal of health and vitality. And, and we want clean water, but then we want healthy water. And uh, let's, we're going to test where these popular beverages range on the pH scale. We're going to find out whether they contribute to our alkalinity and our health and the oxygenation and our energy, or whether they're sapping our energy and, uh, and contributing to acidosis. So I'm going to put a few pH drops in each of these, and I'm, I'm going to go kind of, kind of quickly. But there's a, you know, see if we have an equal amount in, in each of these. And we'll come back and we'll see where they fall on the pH curve. Okay. So, starting over here on the end, we have one of the most popular waters in the world. And as you can see, we, we highly regard this stuff as being healthy, as being good for us uh, and for our families. And what you'll find is that this is actually very oxidizing. Well, that's about a five. Uh, on this logarithmic scale, that's a hundred times more oxidizing, more acidic than our body wants at neutral. So this is sapping our energy. I would, re I would say that that's kind of unhealthy for us. It's not something that you want to be putting in your body. This is uh, another very popular competing water. Okay, look at that. About a five again. A hundred times more oxidized, a hundred times more acidic, a hundred times less oxygen than, uh, than our body wants at neutral. Now, this is a water. This is kind of considered sort of healthy water. As you'll see, it's closer to neutral on the pH scale. Um, it will determine whether this is actually very... Uh, intelligent for us or not, it certainly looks closer to neutral on the pH scale. Now this is our sports drink, and this is representative of all those uh, drinks that are uh, that are designed to uh, you know to help us recover quickly, and, and uh, that, that we give our athletes when we're hot and sweating, tired, and sweating and tired. And, and as you'll see, this is about a three, about a 4.0. It's very oxidizing. It's very acidic. It actually saps your energy. Uh, we're, we're looking for things to contribute to our energy in those circumstances when we're working out and we're hot and active. And, uh, and as you see, that's actually very uh, oxidizing. And then this is our soda. You know, we consume just gallons and gallons of this stuff. Now, we probably know that it's not the best for us, but we probably didn't know that it was this acidic, that it was this oxidizing, this, this toxic to our systems. Most sodas are about a 2.8 to a 3.0 uh, on the pH scale. It's, it's very uh, oxidizing to our systems. Now this is, this is tap water, this good old tap water out of your sink. And you'll notice that on the pH scale, that this actually looks like it's, it's doing pretty good, OK? Uh, it's, a, it's about a 6 to a 7 on the, on the pH scale. Okay, well, that's actually regulated uh, by the government to be in that range. But um, 
This isn't actually very alkaline for your health, as I'll get into in a moment. It looks good, uh, but it's just not really healthy, as I'll explain. Now what we have right here, this is water made by our healthy living water plants. As you can see, it's just rich oxygen purple, okay? Lots of oxygen, lots of alkalinity, lots of electrons. It's, it's very, uh, it contributes to our energy. This is kind of, I call this, is like having the ultimate energy drink. It's the ultimate natural energy drink. Whereas these solutions over here sapped our energy, this solution contributes to our energy. Okay? And this is the pH, uh, this is the range of pH of these popular beverages. Now what I'd like to show you is how this healthy living water actually makes up for a whole bunch of maybe not so great lifestyle choices. You know, if we're out and we have to consume this kind of water, notice what happens when I add just a little bit of living water to these acidic beverages. It buffers the, al it buffers the acidity and it helps turn it alkaline. Okay? Our body wants to be alkaline. The oceans are alkaline. Each, each cell in our body is bathed. Now, look, notice this one. Notice I'm going to continue to pour and pour and pour and pour and pour. This is so acidic that that living water didn't even make a dent in it. The best thing you can do is try to lay off these sodas, these oxidizing acidic sports drinks. Uh, I encourage you to make a significant contribution to your health and consume healthy living water.